Jody Roundhouse with the Roundhouse Report. This is breaking news in Venezuela. Breaking news. It's so fluid that within an hour, this entire video could be completely wrong and correct, etc. It's so fluid, that's why I'm trying to throw it up quickly. Um, this is a replica of Maduro, who is the was the president of Venezuela. And then they had an election, and he was he was fraudulently reelected. It was a rigged election, Maduro. And so he's claiming that he's the president. This has been going on for months. Now the the other guy who actually did win, his name is Juan Guaido. Now we, the United States and the rest of the world supports him. They're like, yeah, it was a rigged election, obviously. And Maduro, he's supported by anyone who doesn't like America. So you have a lot of countries in Central and South America that support him. Uh, the Bolivarian movement from decades and decades ago, that's alive and well still. Um, the Russians, the Chinese, the Iranians. And if you look at the government of Venezuela, from Hugo Chavez onward, you'll see a lot of Russian names. You'll see a lot of Arab and Persian names. You know, it's it's if you actually Google the government of Maduro in Venezuela and uh, look to see what happens. But the bottom line is Guaido in the last few hours went on national TV and called for uh, literally for an armed uprising. Up until now, it had been like peaceful, like he did not do this. He was kind of on the sidelines trying to work through diplomatic you know, channels. Didn't work. Um, Russia currently has several strategic heavy bombers that they've sent into Venezuela on standby. They're there waiting. Uh, Russia has been sending in lots of su supplies uh, via heavy lift cargo, these giant military heavy lift cargo planes. Russia has been barreling in supplies. Um, Iran is sending uh, three to five naval vessels. Currently, they're crossing the Atlantic, and they're going to sit off Venezuela's coast for the for, for the following five months, and then they're going to be replaced by another rotational uh, naval flotilla from Iran, uh, because Iran has uh, Iran uh, in the Middle East, the Persians, not Arabs, the Iranians, they have something called Hezbollah, and Hezbollah is based in Lebanon, and it's basically an extension of the Iranian military, and it's very strong in. Venezuela, and it has been for about two decades, and, and typically it's, I haven't seen them re reported on at all that I can recall in, in the typical media, like Fox, uh, CNN obviously, but Fox, I haven't seen it uh, reported. When you when you look at these migrant crises, this migrant, uh, these caravans that are coming up, and that's another breaking news thing, there's a whole new wave coming up. Uh, these Persians, they can pass as Arab, or I'm sorry, they could pass as Spanish, and they could get, a, and they could smuggle up through here, and if you have and the Iranians, they send the best of their best. They have commanders in Venezuela. They have troops in Venezuela under the guise of being part of this Bolivarian militia that Maduro has, which he recently called for a conscription of an additional one million troops for. Um, I lost my train of thought. Okay, so the, so the Iranians are there with their warships, um, or rather, they're on their way. But the uh, Hezbollah, that's where I was, Hezbollah. Um, Hezbollah is a... In, in Lebanon, it's it basically controls Lebanon. They fight a they fought a war against Israel in 2006. Hezbollah, uh, it's it was created in the early 80s by Iran. It was it's a, trained, equipped, uh, commanded by Iran. It's an extension of Iran. Um, in the early 80s, under Reagan, I recall it was Reagan. Uh, the Beirut the Beirut bombings. If you've heard of that, that was Hezbollah's opening salvo. They killed over 250 Marines in this bombing that they did at this uh, U.S. barracks in uh, Lebanon, in Beirut. And then we lobbed some cruise missiles at them, and then we left. And we kind of said, don't tug on Superman's cape. And we left. I forget who said that. But anyhow, I'm getting off point. Guaido has, has gone on TV, and he has said, take to the streets, arm up. And we are going to overthrow Maduro's falsely elected government. Time is the time has come. What that means is that the CIA, and specifically the Special Activities Division, sad, 
Google that. It's very interesting. Uh, the CIA Special Activities Division. There's a man in real life named Tony Poe. Tony and then P-O-E. Tony Poe. And this guy worked for the uh, CIA Special Activities Division in Cambodia during the Vietnam War. Uh, if you've seen Apocalypse Now, Colonel Kurtz's character is based on two sources. Uh, Heart of Darkness, I believe, is the book. That, it, that That's part of it. But also um, Tony Poe. Tony Poe was a renegade general who went into the Cam Cambodian jungle and he raised his local militia or these local fighters to fight the Viet Cong during the Vietnam War. And he, this is just a sidebar real quick. This is what's going to bump the video up to even more minutes and you, no one's probably watching this now at this point anyhow. So, uh, I lost my train of thought again. You guys are messing me up. Look at what's happening. Look at what's happening. I'm going to get back on point. Okay? So, Guaido, with the military standing behind them, these guys are all decked out in their gear and whatnot. Oh, Special Activities Division, that's what I was talking about. So Tony Poe, he used to use uh, helicopters and he would drop uh, heads on top of en enemy villages. Uh, that was touched upon on Apocalypse Now. Um, he used to pay his fighters. He wasn't supposed to fight himself. He was supposed to advise. He fought with them and he paid his fighters for ears from enemy soldiers that had been killed from Viet, from Viet Cong and NVA soldiers. And then when he was questioned from Saigon, like, what are you doing in Cambodia exactly, dude? What are you doing up there? He sent them a big bag full of freaking ears. And they were like, WT freaking F. They were moldering and like rotting by then. So anyhow, Colonel Kurtz from Apocalypse Now, a little brief history. As far as this uh, Maduro guy goes, I know you can't really see the graphics on here too well, but there's a big X mark on his forehead. You know why? Because of the Monroe Doctrine. And the Monroe Doctrine says, and this is established under Monroe, and it says, this was what, 19, this is in the 1800s when America was establishing itself once and for all, you know, 1800s, 1900s, um, 1800s, 1800s. The Monroe Doctrine, if you come into the, what we were, because the Europeans were still trying to colonize, like the Caribbean, uh, Central South America, we, st we stood up and we were like, look, we could became powerful enough where we were like, look, you need to stay out of our hemisphere. And if you enter our hemisphere, we will attack you. Period. We won't just stay out. We will attack you. Monroe Doctrine. John Bolton is President Trump's national security advisor. And that's his justification for what's currently happening. Because the United States has also been offloading these giant... Uh, military cargo planes full of aid. I don't know how many bullet chains consist in those aid, in, in that aid. And there's been talk uh, among the uh, U.S. Congress, relatively uh, bipartisan talk, of sending additional troops, 5,000 additional United States troops to Colombia to sit on the border with Venezuela in case something happens. We already have a uh, military presence in Colombia. We have a heavy intelligence network throughout South and Central America because of the drug war and all that. And we are on lock and it's in our backyard. And declaring the Monroe Doctrine, because keep in mind right now, I mentioned the Russians and the strategic bombers. I mentioned the Iranian fleet and, the, and Hezbollah and all that. But also China, in the past few days, I've learned that China has troops in Venezuela. I don't know what's going on. Why is China there, of all people? I mean, I know they don't like America, but they don't... This is taking it to a new level. Now you have China. Before Cuban Missile Crisis, that kind of stuff, it was Russia. It's always been Russia, in the modern times, at least. Now China, which is emerging, they've sent like 400 troops there, I think, and they're doing like war games with the Venezuelan military. But Guaido calls on them to fragment, and they have fragmented, and now there are pitch battles in the streets. It is Tuesday, April 30th, 1.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Because seriously, in 10 minutes, the government of Venezuela could be toppled. So, 
Juan Guaido will ultimately prevail because the United States is supporting him. Again, Google CIA Special Activities Division. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. It's very cool. Tony Poe. Uh, Russia, China, Iran must surely know that we will prevail against them. If you look at the logistics of it, if Russia, China, Iran, etc., if they want to fight a war in Venezuela, their supply lines are going to have to go across oceans. The Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, our supply lines are right there. It's in our backyard. We're going to win, period. We would win in their backyard. We are always pissing in their backyard. And the Chinese, I actually wrote this down. Um, the way I'm looking at it is these are tripwire forces. The Russians have a publicly declared 400 troops inside of Venezuela. The Chinese, similar. Uh, the Iranians are in there real heavy, uh, thousands. Um, so why are they there? Why is China there? I'm thinking it's a more of a symbolic move because now... It's in America's backyard, so it's unprecedented vis-a-vis -vis China. Um, and until now, it's always been the U.S. pissing in other countries' backyards, like the South China Sea, uh, the borders of Russia. We, the United States urinates all over it all the time. And now they're kind of doing that to us, and we're getting upset. Now the Russians, the kind of the background ones in the in the e in eastern Russia in the tundra, they actually sell bottles of American urine. Google it. And they pass it off as a cure-all super tonic. It's, it's backwards. It's like the Wild West when the tonic peddlers would come through town. Google it. Do you think I'm joking? Um, in eastern Russia, in the deep tundra, right, bordering on uh, Mongolia, there's a lot of mining and there's a lot of industrial work. And they trade with Mongolia, the, the locals, the Russian locals, they trade tufts of children's hair, and Mongolia accepts that as bilateral currency between those two nation states. Tufts of children's hair. The Mongolians want blondish, palish hair, and they want it to be soft, so it has to be children's hair. They want it to be fluffy, like baby's hair or whatever. Russia will sell a barrel of oil for 10 different tufts of soft children's hair from Mongolia, and vice versa, because the Mongolia also, they've been doing war games with Russia, so they're forming part of an anti-American thing as well. And uh, if they re if they come back with the with the with the um, Mongol with the Mongol Empire, the Mongols versus the modern day Arabs, uh, the Mongols would steamroll them until they got to Israel, and then they'd get mowed down. But so that's a little interesting thing that they sell American urine and that they do this tonic stuff. Uh, Guaido has called for an uprising. The military has now officially fragmented in Venezuela. Up until now, the military has backed Maduro. Maduro, by the way, has been the president of Venezuela for the past number of years, and under the socialist policies that Hugo Chavez initially began to enact 20 years ago, that are now he, Maduro took, and, and if you look at the civil unrest, for almost a year now inside of Venezuela, uh, running street battles among the indigenous population, um, the police force in Venezuela versus the population, running street battles, setting tires on fire, rioting, and well, now it's a straight up, uh, it's, a, it's a coup. It's, it's officially become a coup. The United States and our, our allies or whatever, we don't need them. We're up in there. We're fine. We're backing. Oh, but it's cool, though, because the new guy, Bolsonaro from Brazil, and uh, he's like Trump. And then he's the president of Brazil. And then he just got voted in. And he wants us to open up a big military in installation in Brazil. So he's all about us. And he likes Trump a lot. And they, they're like, they have a bromance. That's Brazil, which is a. That's the powerhouse of the Western Hemisphere after the United States and Canada. And and that's debatable with regard to Canada. Brazil and Colombia are working in tandem with the United States to launch a potential military ground invasion under the pretense, this is my opinion, under the pretense of a, human, of a humanitarian crisis, which is indeed occurring. Uh, they're going north and they're going east. They're getting away from Venezuela. They're flooding into Brazil. They're flooding into Colombia. So that would be used as, as a justification. Um, like I said, Guado will ultimately prevail because the United States backs him. Um, Iran, all these guys, why they are suddenly making a, such a strong and aggressive stand there in Venezuela, as opposed to up until now, it's been the South China Sea or it's been the Middle East and Syria. Maybe that's why. Maybe, maybe they wanted to throw us off guard. 
since we've been throwing them off guard, sending all these ships through the South China Sea, screwing with China, maybe they were like, screw it. We're going to send 400 dudes over there just to F with America, you know. And the Chinese look just like Spanish people, so they're also in those caravans. So if you manage a bunch of, like, Navy SEALs slash Chinese people, you know, uh, different dialects of Spanish, um, Ecuadorian, moving up through these caravans, they mingle, they, they mingle right in. Uh, so it's more of a symbolic thing now. Um, some quotes from an actual article of uh, theinsider.com. Source material is very important. Quote, the Venezuela opposition leader Juan Guaido declared a military coup against the government of President Nicolás Maduro on Tuesday morning, sparking a confrontation that has evolved into, that has evolved into a rapidly escalating armed conflict. That's today. That's Tuesday. That's right now. In a message to supporters online, this is from the article, Guaido announced the beginning of what he called, quote, Operation Liberty, end quote, and called for supporters to rally at a military air base in, in the Venezuela capital of Caracas. All right. Uh, again, Maduro rigged the election. It was a fraudulent election. The whole world knows it. Um, the anti-American axis is like, this is a perfect opportunity to further cement our foothold in Latin America, right in America's back door, like how we've been doing to them for decades. Um, but we're stronger than them, so we can actually do something about it. Um, like, Because like I said, Maduro's only recognized by Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, etc. Oh, uh, Cuba, uh, Bolivia. They have a little alliance system there. Uh, Hezbollah, that's freaking weird that they're in there. Um, the heavy strategic bombers from Russia, the Chinese troops, WTF, uh, Hezbollah is a fixture. Like I said, if you look at the hierarchy of the Venezuelan uh, government, you'll see a lot of Arab names, a lot of Persian names, and a lot of Russian names. You'll see Vladimir and stuff like that. Um, and, and they've been there for almost 20 years, again, beginning on a few of Chavez. Um, the U.S. already has troops inside of Venezuela. The U.S. Congress is talking, like I said, about sending an additional 5,000 troops to sit on Colombia's border with Venezuela. The CIA Special Activities Division, over the past two to four months, since this presidential crisis began, it's been going on for a couple months, surely, this is my opinion, surely they've been using the connections that they've developed over decades and decades of the United States orchestrating coups, kind of like this one, in Central and South America countries, they have such strong connections in this area in Central and South America that they're in a perfect position to orchestrate another coup. Except this one is a legit one because Maduro has run Venezuela into the ground. Venezuela has a lot of oil reserves that the United States could take advantage of. Wouldn't it be better to have a Western Hemisphere that was fully united with the United States? You know? So the Monroe Doctrine, if you come into the Western Hemisphere, America will attack you. This is John Bolton. He's on the news. This is what he's saying. And he's, he's right. This is the Monroe Doctrine. Uh, he's the National Security Advisor. Every morning he meets with President Trump at 8 a.m. sharp to give him a national security assessment. Uh, again, Google Colonel Kurtz, Google Tony Poe. It's weird, but it's funny. It's real life. You can't write it, but I mean, it's weirder than Apocalypse Now. None of these countries, Russia, Iran, China, even if working together inside of Venezuela, could ever even begin to dream huh, of winning such a conflict in America's backyard. They know that. Yeah, I've already talked about it. It's like a tripwire force. It's kind of like us having 4,000 troops inside of Poland. It's like, well, we're obviously not going to win it. If Russia balls up in a Poland, we're, we're going to get bowled over. But if we suddenly have 2,000 American dead, that's going to rally the American public for a full-on war with Russia, etc. So it's just vice versa. Uh, but like I said, those supply lines would stretch across the oceans. And they, they just couldn't sustain it. And economically, Russia sucks. And over here in the Western Hemisphere, we don't use children's freaking hair for currency. We don't do that weird crap. Seriously, they don't even have electricity. They don't have electricity in eastern Russia. <sighs> Supposed to do this at the beginning, I messed up. The Roundhouse Report. That's me. Jody Roundhouse. Please subscribe. Hopefully you learned something. And again, 10 minutes from now, uh... There could be a war, a proxy war. The, the civil war has already begun. The military of Venezuela is fragmented. 
un under the, I'm sure, leadership of the CIA Special Activities Division slash the, the U.S. military, uh, conventional forces. Um, they, we, uh, it is officially already fragmented, and they are fighting in the streets right now as I speak. So uh, this is very, very fluid. We don't know who's going to win this war. It's a civil war now inside of Venezuela. And it could turn as a potential to turn into a proxy war similar to what we're seeing in Syria, where you have Russian troops sitting there supporting one side, and then you have the American troops sitting in the same country supporting another side. And that's extremely dangerous, especially since it's in the United States' backyard. We have enough problems. And, this, and again, these caravans, think about it. And they just now released the, a, a breaking news thing. I made a video about this a few weeks ago, um, about how... Um, People are seizing this opportunity with the caravans from all around the world. Africa, Afghans, Afghanistan, they've been caught. A lot of Syrian migrants, a lot of Arab migrants have been caught both on the Canadian and the Mexican borders. Okay. So if Trump would actually make that case, then any politician running against the, the border wall would be seen as being soft on national security. I'm telling you, that's one of the reasons I think that we have not attacked Iran is because we know that they have. It would be the Iranian equivalent to the United States as your Navy, uh, Navy SEALs. So uh, imagine 20 Navy SEALs going to town in New York City, like fully armed and equipped with RPGs and grenades and machine guns. I mean, think of the Las Vegas shooter. He killed a whole bunch of people and wounded a whole bunch of people. And that was one guy. He wasn't even really well trained, so... All right, we hit up 20 minutes. Please subscribe. Jody Roundhouse. I'm also on minds.com forward slash Jody Roundhouse. Jody is a man's name spelled with a Y. The women hijacked it in the 19th century and my parents and me are bringing it back. Uh, Maduro or Guaido may end up dead in the coming hours of assassination. Uh, there will be a regime change one way or the other in the coming hours. So now I have to freaking SEO this thing and put it up on YouTube. Have, no, have literally like four people watch it and like one person like it. But that doesn't matter because it's fun to do, right? But seriously, if you did learn anything, it would be good if you uh, would comment. Oh, sore throat rebel. Oh, it would be good if you would comment. If you would comment, then we could start a running dialogue. See what I mean? A running dialogue. All right. Roundhouse report. Jody Roundhouse out.